What was your experience like at the mansion? I had a good experience. That's because I wasn't the standard type that Hef liked. His, he liked the, you know, young, all-American blonde girls. I mean, if you think about it, a lot of the playmates lived at the Playboy Mansion. Can you name one black playmate who's ever stayed there? Did black women fit Playboy's standard of beauty? No. I think politically, they tried to do the right thing. But once you got in there, they just was like, OK, we did what we were supposed to do. I think they should have had more Hispanic girls, more Asian girls. I think they should have had more ethnic girls, period, even on the cover. Welcome back to the Morning Wrap. That was a clip there from Secrets of Playboy. The second season premieres tonight on a &E. And joining me right now is the host of the series, award-winning investigative journalist, Lisa Guerrero. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so excited to be here. I know, I wanna hear all about it. I feel like there's always a mystery surrounding yeah. Playboy, inside and out. Right. And you have been telling the story now for the, this is the second season that's gonna premiere. Correct. And um, tell me why it's been so important for you to interview the girls and bring light to certain aspects for decades playboy has been this iconic brand that has kind of set the standard in terms of how women feel about themselves and what men think is sexy mm -hmm. so last season on the show we really spent a lot of time uh, investigating the mansion the brand hugh hefner himself this season in season two we really focused on the women why they made the really controversial decision to pose, what that experience was like, and what the ramifications have been like in their careers and in their personal lives. So this, I, I like to say last season was about him. Mm -hmm. This season has been about her and her and her and her. And these stories tonight in the two hour season finale are incredible. These women have really impactful experiences. And I think, you know, getting back to the standards of beauty, they have really pushed the boundaries about what we think sexy is. So it's a really empowering season this year. I feel like that will um, obviously uncover possibly some bombshells or possibly yeah. some just you know additional insight. <clears throat> oh, is yeah. there anything specific that you learned or you took away from some of your interviews that you were not expecting to even hear or know about? The hypocrisy. <laughs> I mean, the hypocrisy. You're like, easy answer. Uh, I easy got answer. You. I, there was bombshell after bombshell right. in every single episode. But, but the through line for me was, why is it OK for men to buy Playboy, for them to display Playboy in an army barracks, for them to sell Playboy on an Air Force base? But when an Air Force drill sergeant who served 14 years serving our country, who was a badass woman, when she posed, she was drummed out of the mm. military. At the same time, the Air Force had a logo of the Playboy Bunny on one of their fighter jets. So it's that kind of story, the hypocrisy of how our society feels about the women that pose and the shame that they feel for doing something which is really quite honestly not a big deal and certainly not illegal, which would be to pose for Playboy. But through the years, I think we've really started to change our, our, you know, our opinion about why these women posed and who they are and, and what, what it means in society to do something like that. We are definitely seeing a shift. Yeah. Um, what do you hope people get out of um, this series? Empathy. Empathy. As a journalist, as a host, as an investigative reporter, I lead with empathy. And I think it's our job to listen to people's stories to really listen. You know, at, when, you, when you interview somebody, part of your job is to ask the questions. The other part is to listen to the, the stories and their answers. And so what I learned is a, a whole new level of empathy about women um, who have chosen to do something that, again, society has frowned upon in the past, but their reasons for doing it are all very different. Sometimes they're strategic, financial. Um, they could be about self-worth. And um, to me, I think what I hope everybody gets out of the series is the ability to look at somebody else's life a little bit differently and to be less judgmental and more empathetic. Preach. <laughs>
<laughs> just preach. Word. Okay, let's talk about uh, the book that you recently uh, released. Um, tell us all about it. Warrior, My Path to Being Brave is my memoir. I started out as a sportscaster here Look at, at CBS2 in Los Angeles. And I pretty quickly went from regional to national mm -hmm. uh, prominence doing sports. And I went to Monday Night Football. But what I learned along the way is that, you know, to overcome a lot of challenges that women did, especially in the 80s and 90s covering sports, took a lot of guts. Uh, but at the same time, I negotiated too much. I compromised on things I shouldn't have. So my book, Warrior, is both a love letter to young women getting into the industry and also a love letter to my younger self saying, you know, it was okay to make those mistakes, but here's what I learned from them and here's how I hope you can become more brave and courageous as well. Thank you so much. We have 10 seconds left, so thank you for joining us. We're gonna put all this information up on our website at kcalnews.com.